Hello, in today's video, we shall learn in detail about carbon cycle. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding about the different steps in carbon cycle, types of carbon cycle namely biological and geological carbon cycle, human intervention and importance of carbon cycle. Let us begin with the introduction to carbon cycle. Carbon is an essential building block of life on earth. It is a basic component of both plants and animals. The cyclic process in which carbon is circulated and transformed continuously between the living and non-living components of the biosphere is known as the carbon cycle. Most of the carbon is stored in rocks and sediments and the rest is stored in the ocean, atmosphere and in living organisms. Carbon cycles through these reservoirs or sinks. The oceans are the giant carbon sinks. The three main carbon reservoirs are the lithosphere, hydrosphere and the atmosphere which are influenced by the biosphere. The source of carbon compounds occurring in nature are the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere or dissolved in water. Carbon is released through human activities and natural processes and can make its way into the biosphere, pedosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere or atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is also released by the burning of fossil fuels, decaying organic matter and geological processes. Carbon is found in rocks, shells of organisms in the form of carbonates. In living organisms, carbon occurs as complex compounds like carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Photosynthesis, respiration, combustion are the major processes that impact carbon cycle. Now, let us study about the steps involved in carbon cycle. The main pathway of carbon in carbon cycle is from the air and water into the living system and back. The carbon present in the atmosphere is in oxidized form as carbon dioxide. It is absorbed by the plants during photosynthesis and is converted into reduced form carbohydrate. These plants are then consumed by the animals where carbon compound gets accumulated and gets incorporated into the tissues. When both the plants and animals die, Mineralization of the organic form of carbon by the microorganisms help to restore the original form of carbon. Carbon is also restored by the process of respiration during which the breakdown of organic carbon compounds take place releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Forest fires are also responsible for releasing carbon dioxide and thus restoring the original form of carbon. Combustion of fossil fuels by humans pumps back carbon into the atmosphere. Carbon deposits as limestone and marble in the rocks formed from the sediments of shell bearing marine animals. Carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere by the weathering of rocks and also due to chemical reactions occurring during volcanic eruptions. By the way, 
If you are getting some value out of this video, please like and share this video so that all of us can learn, unlearn and relearn together. Also, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Next, let us look into the sources of carbon. The main sources of carbon are air, water, fossil fuels and rocks. In the atmosphere, carbon occurs as carbon dioxide. During photosynthesis, the green plants take in carbon dioxide. This oxidized form of carbon is reduced to carbohydrates and incorporated into the tissues. Carbon dioxide gas is also released into the atmosphere by volcanic activities. During respiration, both plants and animals take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. The carbohydrates formed during photosynthesis is converted in the plant tissues into various organic compounds like proteins, fats, nucleic acids, etc. This carbon compound pass from the herbivores to the carnivores. When the plants and animals die, their dead remains and excreta are decomposed by the decomposers namely bacteria and fungi and carbon dioxide is returned back into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is either dissolved in water or combined with water to form carbonic acid. The carbonic acid dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. The aquatic plants make use of these bicarbonate ions for photosynthesis. When partial decomposition of dead tissues of plants occur, it yields coal. Partial decomposition of marine organisms yield natural gas and petroleum. When coal, natural gas and petroleum are burnt or used in industries, it produces carbon dioxide which is released into the atmosphere. Carbon occurs as limestone and marble in the rocks. During withering of rocks, carbonates are converted into carbon dioxide by the action of acid produced by the microorganisms. Chemical withering releases different ions. In the ocean, calcium ions react with carbonate dissolved in water to form calcium carbonate deposits namely limestone onto the ocean floor. Volcanic activities also release carbon dioxide from the rocks. At the bottom of the sea, rocks are formed from the sediments of shell-bearing marine animals. Corals also help in depositing carbon as calcareous skeleton using carbon dioxide from seawater. Next, let us study about the types of carbon cycle. There are two types of carbon cycle. First type of carbon cycle is short term carbon cycle or biological carbon cycle or fast carbon cycle. It is a biogeochemical process in which carbon moves from the atmosphere to the biosphere and then back to the atmosphere. Movement of carbon across reservoirs namely atmosphere, land and ocean takes relatively short time. 
The exchange of carbon with atmosphere occurs mainly through photosynthesis and respiration. In both land and oceans, green plants convert carbon dioxide to carbohydrates during photosynthesis. During respiration by both plants and animals, metabolic breakdown of sugar produces carbon dioxide and energy. But after the death and decay of plants and animals, they are acted upon by the decomposers and carbon dioxide is returned back to the atmosphere. On land, when the biological remains are buried deep into the ground, under the influence of immense pressure and heat, it gets converted into coal, oil and natural gas. In the ocean, the carbon sinks to the ocean floor. Phytoplanktons use carbon to make shells of calcium carbonate of marine animals. After the death of these animals, their bodies settle at the bottom and get buried in sediments. Due to great pressure and heat, they get compressed and finally transformed into limestone. Therefore, in short term carbon cycle, photosynthesis, oceanic uptake and absorption by phytoplanktons remove carbon from the atmosphere. Respiration, decay and anthropogenic activities return carbon into the atmosphere. Second type of carbon cycle is the long term carbon cycle or geological carbon cycle or slow carbon cycle. It is a geological carbon cycle which takes place in the rocks. It takes several millions of years to complete one cycle. The different geochemical processes which occur in carbon cycle are withering, dissolution, precipitation of minerals, volcanic eruptions, etc. Carbon is stored for long periods in carbon reservoirs. Carbon dioxide from the atmosphere combines with water to form carbonic acid which ionizes into carbonate and bicarbonate ions. The ions in C form calcium carbonate which is a major component of shells of marine animals. With the passage of time in the ocean floor, calcium carbonate form limestone. On land, withering of rocks and minerals takes place and also decomposition of organisms due to which carbon formed gets accumulated in the soil. Surface runoff may lead to leaching of carbon into the water reservoirs. Anaerobic decomposition of remains of plants buried deep underground are converted into fossil fuels after millions of years. Carbon sediment from ocean floor by subduction or by the movement of one tectonic plate beneath another may settle deep within the earth. Shift in tectonic plates brings about gradual long-term changes in carbon dioxide emission. Next, let us understand carbon cycle and human intervention. Anthropogenic activities like deforestation, burning of fossil fuels, changing land use affect carbon cycle. Earth's supply of carbon sinks is depleting due to deforestation or cutting down trees. As a result, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere is being disturbed. 
deforestation causes climate change, desertification and increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. With industrialization, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air is increasing, causing disturbance in the natural regulation of temperature in the atmosphere. This leads to global warming. Anthropogenic carbon dioxide sources are from thermal power generation, transportation, industries, etc. These sources burn fossil fuel and emit carbon dioxide gases. Mining of fossil fuel and burning of fossil fuel release large amount of carbon from the geosphere into the atmosphere. The burning of fossil fuels by humans for electricity, transportation contribute to the emissions of greenhouse gases. Change in climate leads to higher temperature and acidity in the oceans putting marine life in danger. With the change in oceans chemical composition, it has an adverse impact on coral reefs, thus reducing oceanic biodiversity. Increase in carbon dioxide concentration causes rise in temperature, melting of polar ice, rise in ocean levels, resulting in submergence of coastal areas and smaller islands. Finally, let us learn about the importance of carbon cycle. Carbon is essential for life. It is an integral component of life on Earth. Carbon cycle is important for the maintenance of balance in ecosystem. Carbon cycle regulates global temperature and climate. Carbon dioxide in greenhouse gases help to trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is used by plants during photosynthesis to make their own food. Carbon cycle helps in the transfer of energy. So today we have learnt in detail about steps involved in carbon cycle, types of carbon cycle, carbon cycle and human intervention and also about its importance. I have some practice questions for you. Please share your answers in the comment section below. You can pause the video and write down the questions if you like. Thank you so much for your time and participation. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Also, if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology, please mention that in the comments section below. I'll see you there. Goodbye. All the best.